Welcome to our podcast. I'm Stacey Donadio. And I'm Shannon Fasone from Turnkey Women, where we're opening doors for women in business. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome <laughs> to the Turnkey Women's Podcast. We are your hosts, Stacey Donadio and Shannon Fasone. And today we have with us in the studio, Nicole Nolan Hi, from guys. Whole Peace Counseling out of Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Thank My you first for coming. Podcast. So exciting. It's painless. And yeah. you'll be addicted, I swear. You'll be begging <laughs> to come back on. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself personally, and then we'll dive in professionally. Mm-hmm. Well, I've grown up here in Monmouth County my entire life. Um, you know, I've gone to high school here, have friends. My kids go to school in Monmouth County, and I just started and opened my business as well. So, you know, I came back here. I went off to, you know, college and grad school. Um, you know, took a little while to figure out what it was exactly that I wanted to do with my career. Um, ended up doing public policy work, uh, a lot of social work, it ended up being, and then became a clinical social worker. Um, And that's what I really have my passion for. Uh, I do a lot of work with the high risk population. Mm -hmm. I talk a lot to people about suicide prevention and how to help kids that are really struggling, um, making connections with other nonprofits, uh, trauma work, grief, all of that. And that's kind of like the bread and butter of what I do in terms of like advocacy. And then there's my smaller work that I do directly with clients that range throughout the age spectrum and with a variety of challenges that are facing people in today's world. Yeah, and we've mm-hmm. got a lot of them, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. What is the um, what is the biggest challenge you see in, we'll say, like mm-hmm. the preteen to teenage years? It's so different now. It's, it's so, so different. different. It's just different. It's so different. I talked to you know, obviously a variety of people all day from school people to parents to kids themselves. And it, the, the climate in which we're just growing up, um, that these kids, you know, have access to social media and a variety of different things have just created, you know, challenges as it relates to self-esteem, anxiety, you know, you had the pandemic, we were home for quite some time, you know, you see a lot of issues right now with school refusal. Um, you know, and it's and it's different from when we grew up, you know, back in the day, like you didn't not go to school. Right. Right. right? And it's interesting you say that. I have a very good friend. Um, he's a single dad. His ex-wife unfortunately passed away from substance abuse, but they have had, I guess he has. Uh, how old is he? 14? He's in eighth grade. So I think he just turned fourth, mm-hmm. 14. And for years from fifth grade on, he was just would get up and say, I'm not going to school today. Yeah, and and you know you had a pandemic mm. where post COVID, pre and yeah pre COVID and post COVID. Interesting. And then COVID doesn't help that, right. right? So like you know our traditional view of like what makes a kid successful is that you're able to get up and go to school every day. Right. But for three ish years, you know we were home and kids were like, well wait, if I could do it at home, why do I have to go to school and do it? Or so for me, I have a five year old who never had to go until <laughs> all of a sudden he's like. You're putting me where, and yeah. I'm going with who? Nope. Like, mm-hmm. nope, mm-hmm. not. And he just, yeah. like, he still. I just went to something this morning with him in the eval, and and he was like mm-hmm, scared. I'm like, she wants to play with a bear, mm-hmm. but like, he just sees a stranger, and all of a sudden, yeah. a wall goes up, yeah. and yeah. they don't even know. It's just how they're conditioned. And if that happens yeah. when you're a teenager or mm-hmm. a preteen, and you're already in that like flux, I bet yeah. that would be yeah. jolting. Yes. So you have a good amount of Yeah, I mean, that... most of my clients are all at their core anxiety or trauma related. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and a lot of people, you know, we tend to throw really big diagnoses at people. And we say, oh, my gosh, it's going to be this. Or, oh, my gosh, it's going to be that. And, you know, I pull people back. And I'm like, Thank let's God. just figure out what is Look. happening first. Like, you have gone through some shit. Right, like yeah. a cause like, and an effect. Is, right. Yes. You know, yeah. I don't know that it's actually this, and I don't know that it's actually this. And we're going to take a couple of months to figure out what that is. You know, I've had people come to me with five, six, seven diagnoses, which, first of all, is not great practice in and right. of itself. And I'm like, we're going to pull back here, and we're going to process your trauma. We're going to process your loss. We're going to process what you go through. Most of those people end up with one diagnosis, and it's, it's probably crazy. just like a generalized anxiety, right. which 
we're all growing up in this crazy world. Like in some sense, like a lot of us are just anxious people because of what we've been through. So, you know, it's, it's really about looking at people from the whole, mm. you know, and that's kind of what I do in my practice is like, let's see what's going on in your family, what's going on in school, what's going on over here. Let's bring that all together and try to make the best possible outcome mm -hmm. while also making therapy authentic to you. So many kids come in, oh, you're going to tell me to journal, aren't you? I'm like, <laughs> journaling, my friend, is not a stage four intervention. That wow. is like a stage yeah. one. That is when yeah. we are cool, calm, and collected. Right. No, I am not telling you when you feel like you're going to die at 12 a.m. and you're panicking and you can't breathe. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Pull go out get that, that journal. Write those feelings down. Get that journal. Breathe in your nose you feel, and out you know? your mouth. And they're like, oh, you're so blunt. I like that about you. You love. You know, you just, and I'm like, well, because I know what it's like to have a panic attack. You're not going to journal. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go upstairs and say to your parent, until we've done a lot of help seeking work. And what say, would you be know, something like, you would tell that kid to do in that moment? Oh, we're talking about, you know, very low level sensory changes. Yeah. I want you to go get an ice cube and hold it. Oh. I want you to go and, you know, I do a lot of work in terms of like, all of my work involves parents, you know, Look. a lot of parent coaching. And I'm yeah. like, listen, what you talk to me about is confidential. Uh, but at some point, I'm going to have to teach you how to talk to your parents about what's going on because I need you to be safe. Yeah. Right. Mm. So we don't have to tell your parents everything that's making you feel unsafe. But right now, you know what? I'm not feeling great. I'm having a really bad panic attack. What yeah. am I going to do? OK, mom knows to go get the ice cube. Right. You know, and it's about coming up with something that's authentic to kids. I say, you know, some people when they panic, you get hot. Right. So you're sweating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people traditionally say, oh, go take a warm shower. Those kids look at me and they're like, I'm going to get in a warm shower. I already feel like I'm sweating my, you know, ass off. Like, I'm not going to go get in a hot shower. Okay. So then you like cold. Mm. So we're going to do something cold. Okay. You don't like a lot of people get pins and needles and they freak out when they're having a panic attack. Okay. So you are going to be the person that takes that hot bath. We talk about, you know, sensory changes and things. And then I'm able to work with the kid. Once I get their brain to not be on fire, yeah. then we're talking about stuff of like, what are your core beliefs? You have core beliefs about the world. You have core beliefs about yourself, about your family. You know, there's something in you that's triggering a red flag that says that you're unsafe. That's a we deep gotta, question yeah. for a teenager or oh, a preteen. they have the answer. I was going right? to say. Mm -hmm. See, if someone yeah. would have asked me that, I don't know that I would have been able to answer it at 13 years mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Be, I love it. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Like, these kids really do have a lot of core beliefs about what it is, you know. And, and growing up here in Monmouth County, a lot of it has to do with perfectionism and of high performing. Wow. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, I need to get this grade. I want to get this grade. And talk, going back to the challenges that we're talking about, this, this is really self-driven. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, the parents have to pull the pressure off. I can't tell you how many parents come in and they're like, I just want him to be happy. happy. You know, he puts this pressure on himself. Right. Well, you know what I, I think it? it is, too? Like, just being now I'm in that middle school space mm -hmm. with two of my kids. Like, we're very, we have um, expectations mm -hmm. of, like, behavior at, of school. Yeah. They're not crazy. I want you to do your work. I want you to put mm -hmm. your best foot forward. I want you to be kind. That's yeah. it, right? Yeah. But I have, since fifth grade, when Aiden entered middle school, he started with, uh, I want to go to this college, yeah. and I have to get this grade. And I think... A lot of it comes from their peers mm -hmm. because maybe maybe there's like five kids at school mm -hmm. whose parents are like crazy yeah. and crazy in the fact that they're like, you're going to Villanova. Mm -hmm. This is the trajectory. And now they're talking about it in school. And now these other <sighs> kids feel like they have to. Sure. It's whereas like we just wanted to wear the same white sneakers. Yeah. As our beers yes. in school. Yeah. I was not thinking about college when I was 13, but I can tell you my nine-year-old son is thinking about what right. high school he's going to. Right. He asked me the other day, Mom, do you want me to go to a college or a university? And I'm driving. And I'm like, I don't know. What's the difference? He's like, Mom, there's a big difference. They there's know that. There's a difference that. between college and And now university. schools are set up. I mean, look at Red Bank Regional. Like, even when I was there 20 years ago, they yeah. had excellent programs. But yeah. now they're academies. Academies. Yes. And now it's like you're going into a major before you're going to college and having a major, which I even think, I didn't know what the hell I wanted yeah. to do at 18. Yeah. It was like, cross your fingers and hope you picked a decent thing that you can excel at. But now so much earlier mm -hmm. and it's like how much lower and younger do we put such pressure on, on our these kids? kids? And what are they going to be yeah. like by the time they hit college? Mm -hmm. They're like pressure cookers. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, like I'm not mad at like what, that, that's such a protective factor, right? Like yeah. you're talking about kids who have long range vision, right? Right. So if I'm working with a high risk kid and they don't have, like that's, that is an excellent prognosis for me. It's how, okay, that's what you want to do with your life. How am I going to get you to manage it? 
Right. right? How am yeah. I going to teach you to have the skills to be able to go to that boarding school, to be able to get into, you know, X, Y, and Z college? Right. Because I'm not certainly going to sit there and be like, oh, you know what? That's too much pressure. You should really not think about going yeah. to that school. You should really not think about doing that. You know, very early on, I had a supervisor who taught me and was like, you know, most parents want what's best for their children. Right. There's a little misguided. And yeah. I mean, like, I, I know that now as a parent. Like, I, I had all of these conceptions about what it was going to oh, be like. didn't we You all? know, before you have a child, and now I have three, and my God, those personalities are so, you know, far, like, so beyond with, e- with each of them. But, you know, I would never tell my son, like, no, 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 you know, we're not thinking about that yet. Like, he asked me the other day, he's like, I want to drive up to Rutgers. Can you take me to Rutgers to go see what it is? Mm-hmm. Well, of course I am, because I want him to be able to do that. But I'm also working with him on the back end of, like, how are you managing your yeah. stress? How are you managing this? How are you managing your attention and your focus in yeah. school um, to make him that well-rounded person? Because what's the other option? That he doesn't have the motivation? That he right. doesn't have these hopes and the, these right. dreams? Or fails and you know? feels like a failure, yeah. which escalates those deep-seated yeah. insecurities, anxieties, and then it's like that hamster wheel of like, yeah. how do we get off this ride? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. how do we get back to positive reinforcement, not overdoing your goals in, in mm-hmm. the present moment? It's, it's a not balance. For, it's like, like life work balance at 6 to yeah. 13, right? Yeah. 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 You know, and we're fortunate a to lot. be in the area that we are. Like, the schools are doing a lot of really innovative things. A lot of them have mental health on the forefront of yes. their focus. They're yeah. really looking at that holistic view of the student in a variety of different ways and increasing opportunities. So, you know, fortunate enough to be able to live here and say, like, my kid can really go to any school that he yes. wants to. And you, and you can you know? feel good about it. And you yeah. can feel good about yeah. it. All of these kids are getting into excellent schools. It's not like, again, going back when we where we were, like, you know, okay, yeah. like if, if you want this, you got to go here and you right. go here. It's it's like, you know, at the end of the day, take a big, deep breath, parents. Like, they're going to get in where they're meant to be. It's just how can I, like, if you're with me and I'm your therapist, how can I help you get there? Yeah. Which is how such a huge thing because I've talked to a lot of parents post any diagnosis for a mm-hmm. child, whether mm-hmm. it's a challenge or whatever it is. And if somebody just bridged that common sense moment of, like, chill out digest what this is right now mm-hmm. all that is is a plus b we just have to get to c oh yeah mm-hmm. a, a personal experience for sure in yeah. a way different capacity but if somebody had just said those simple and i was fortunate enough that mm-hmm. i did seek therapy mm-hmm. and i did have a therapist who when you just said i'm very blunt mm-hmm. he said something to me and i almost cursed him out and <laughs> then i sat there and i was like yeah. oh You're- okay yeah. Okay. And then it was like a mindset change. Absolutely. But that's not always what you're getting in therapies, right? Yeah. Which is totally what sets you apart in that very – the same thing when you said the um, sensory change. To mm-hmm. me, it's always – is there something medical before we're jumping to mm-hmm. like a behavioral thing? Because yeah. behaviors are communication. Mm-hmm. And if they're not able to express it, whatever their level of language may or may not mm-hmm. be – Maybe something else is going oh on. And right. stop dismissing this child yeah. Oh, yeah. in a way that doesn't validate that maybe a tweak in their sensory would be life changing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Don't you life remember changing. being panicked? I mean, I can say like I had I've had anxiety my entire life. I can go back to three years old and remember panicking. Like mm-hmm. and I can't say it was anything. It was just I think my yeah. genetic makeup. I'm Same. Just a train wreck. No. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, if, if you know me, <laughs> yes. My uncle said to me once, he's like, welcome to the gam stomach. And I just thought it was like a stomach issue. Yeah. And I was like, no, oh, it's that yeah. like that dread mm-hmm. feeling. Yes. And I, my, my mother would always be like, and God bless her. Like later when I was able to identify mm-hmm. that I was having a panic attack, she accepted it. But yeah. I could be like, oh, I, I'm nervous, nervous. And it was like, get over it. Move like yeah. you have to move past it. Push it down. Right. Keep going. Yeah. Um, and I think about like the first time I realized I was having a panic attack I took myself to the hospital yep and I sat there and I was like I'm having a heart attack I feel like I'm having a heart attack and they had me hooked up to everything Mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the monitors and everything's fine (laughs) Fine. and I'm mortified in Mm -hmm. Bayshore Healthcare Center yeah like should not now is that I hope that's a different yeah situation this day and age I think it's just you know we're moving towards Mm -hmm. destigmatizing right and I think you know and I talk to kids about this too. Like when you're having a panic attack, you're in class. The last thing you want to do is make everyone else draw aware attention that you're having to a panic. it. Yes. So they're like, I literally just sit in class like this and I'm freaking out. 
And I'm like, okay, well, you know, and I work with, okay, we're gonna get a seat closer to the door. You're gonna give this teacher, you know, signal. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna work on that so you can kind of just get out, do what, do what you need to do. But you know, I remember that too. I remember being little. I, I joke all the time. You know, you see the TikToks and it's like, what's the moment where you realized you were an anxious person? Hmm. Is oh, thinking back. I remember at night lining up all of my stuffed animals in case mm-hmm. there was a house fire. Which ones I was taking? Yep. Like, which ones I could take? I slept with yep. my phone. It was the best thing in the yeah. world when I got a phone. Obviously, I wanted to talk on the phone. <laughs> but I would sleep with it. Yeah. Because if there was a robber, yeah. a mm-hmm. robber, yeah. like what was I? I it would literally like this. Yep. I could have my brother's friends, right. like all 25 of them in the house. Right. I would still freak out that yeah. I had to have that. I slept on my parents' floor until I was 10. Same. Yeah. So, and, and now you're saying, you know, before Same. you said at 13 years old, I couldn't yeah. figure out what a core belief of mine was. Uh-huh. I just identified one for the two of you. There was something about the world that felt yeah. unsafe. Yeah. Yeah. There was something about it. And it, so, you know, to be able to target that. And Isn't like, that okay. like so funny how yeah. we would think these big words <laughs> and she just totally dumbed it down <laughs> to <laughs> our <laughs> levels. Like, oh, yeah, no, no. You know, and, and that's what yeah. core belief is. But I, that you know, that's, you're like a decoder. That so you impressive. find out their core beliefs and then how does that translate into you figuring out like what's going to mm-hmm. work for them mm-hmm. as a calming like grounding i know you love grounding yeah we talk a lot Wait, about yeah. can you like give a little definition of what just i'm sure i had to define it when we grounding is just like it's different for everybody but i, I mean at its core it's this idea of like getting down to the earth and sitting down and just being at peace and being rooted right okay. so you're rooted you're you're set you're laid out like, like so present in the present moment in the moment okay. you know able to kind of you know just take that big deep breath and okay like let me really think about what's going on here you know how do you mm-hmm. get to that grounding when you're an anxious person you know you, you know you're, you're sitting there and you're three or you're four or you're five and you're thinking about that fire you're not grounded you know what's going to help you get grounded what did you say i went to my parents floor right i laid on my floor mm. so you my know? so the oh, ground yes yeah so for some people that's like very grounding i say i say to you know kids all the time like where is it that you feel the safest Mm. How do you feel the safest? You know, if I could give you a magic wand, what would what would that kind of like look like if we didn't have to worry about where it is? Okay, so and if it's something crazy, you know, kids are just like, oh, it's Disneyland. Okay, well, we can't go to Disneyland every day, but how can we do something that <laughs> replicates Disneyland, like when we're at home? And we talk about things from there. But you know, we're all talking about really evident, and and I'm making this like layman's terms, right? But this is like evidence based cognitive behavioral therapy mm-hmm. that is really targeted for a variety of diagnoses, um, and it really helps you like identify what this person erroneously thinks about the world or about Mm. themselves that's causing that anxiety it breaks it down um you know kids come in and I'm like so you had a panic attack sure all right what do you say to yourself when you're having a panic attack I'm fine why would you say you're fine well what else am I supposed to say Miss Nolan like you know uh I I, still say that now you're sitting here and I'm like I just said that that last weekend you're fine just breathe you're fine no, well, is it like you, tricking yourself? Yes, yes you're lying to yourself. Yeah. I say all the time, what happens when you're you not try fine. to tell yourself you're fine? Right. You're not fine. You're That's not actually Stacy's like mantra. It's fine. Everything's, Everything's fine. fine. I'm fine. No, it's no, all it's fine. Fine. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, she gets Fire. lost. She, she doesn't know where she so is. So alternatively, like, what should our inner monologue be? Possibly, I'm not, I'm not fine right now, but I know that I will be. Will be. I right? will be fine. I, I will be. A lot of psychoeducation with these kids. Again, going back to where we're living, these kids are brilliant. Our mm. kids are smart. They're acutely aware of what's going on with themselves. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a pullout. So I say to them, your typical anxiety or panic attack can't last longer than 15 minutes. If it's lasting longer than 15 minutes, we're talking about something else. Like maybe we're enrolling panic attacks. We're talking about post-traumatic stress. We're talking about something a little bit, but your body physiologically like will max out in about 15 minutes. Can you get through 15 minutes? Yeah, I can get through 15 minutes. That's less than class. Class is 35, class is 40. Okay, so we gotta get through 15 minutes. What are we gonna say to get us through those 15 minutes? Okay, we're gonna hold our ice cream. We're gonna do our safety plan. We're gonna do this. I'm not okay right now, but I know that I will be. How do you know that you will be? Well, because I've had panic attacks before and and they've ended, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm also retraining Mm. the brain to not look at these panic attacks like they're traumatic. Right. Which in and of itself is something that I've said to people before. You have a panic attack that's bad enough, that's your traumatic event. You start avoiding things. You Mm -hmm. start moving away from whatever triggered that. And that's where you get yourself into a lot of, you know. And you subconsciously probably do that. Like, Mm -hmm. I could think of all the things I've avoided in my I literally, (laughs) like, that she's making me go to the beach club this summer. And I'm literally having daily panic attacks about it (laughs) with my kids. And I'm like, (gasps) 
all right, so what we're going to do? <laughs> you're going to drive by the beach club. You're going to sit in the parking lot at the beach club. You're going to walk up and touch the door and run away. We'll create a whole I feel like I'm always the case club. study in these oh, situations. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? So that's like a safety plan. That would be like what we call exposure therapy. Mm, like okay. it would gradually increase you at a level where you felt felt comfortable, where your anxiety was wasn't going above, you know, like on a scale of one to ten. If like the kid is always at a seven, like okay, the, nothing above a two, all right. So we're gonna drive by it for a couple weeks, mom. Okay, and you're gonna stage one intervention journal for me how you're feeling just driving by. Okay. Okay. Sitting in the parking lot, going to the door, actually being there. Because again, a lot of kids want to do the things that they feel that they can't. They just feel unsafe. Hmm. Gosh. And social media is not helping this because now we have, Mm -hmm. like my mother is the prime example of there's so many more people being kidnapped now. (laughs) And I say to her. I did not think that's what you were about to say. That's what I said. I was like, oh, we're doing that. I literally. Now I'm anxious. This is this is her (laughs) because now I said, no, we've all we only watched New York News. Right. We didn't have access to the yeah. news everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Now I know what's going on in Toledo. Yeah. I shouldn't know what's going on in Toledo. Like, no. I should know what's going on in, in Red Bank. Right. Talk about your al- algorithms on social media to begin with. Like, some days, like, I'll just, I'm like, what is with the horror stuff that I'm getting? Yeah. I'm like, this is anxious for me. Yeah. Uh, and I know that I have to, like, for myself, I know I have to put that away until my algorithm changes or whatever I do to that. Um, because if I consistently expose myself to things that are part of my trauma or part of my anxiety, mm-hmm. well, I'm, I'm inching up on a stage three without even knowing it. Yeah. Isn't that you know? crazy now that you have to think about what you're putting out there, not just to the universe, but now the algorithm thinks mm-hmm. it is the universe? Mm-hmm. And like my feed, I was just thinking about this, mm-hmm. has been all these very fit women exercising. And I'm like, I don't want to see you right now. <laughs> oh, that's my fault <laughs> on turnkey women it's me I'm the problem <laughs> no it's on all of my accounts like smart title I go on there and I'm like stop it I know I have to but right now I cannot and it yeah. does it's almost like now I have to manifest what I want to see mm-hmm. but that mm-hmm. could almost be oh it's terrible like and a safety plan instead oh, right all the yes time. and the all snapchat the of yes all. Mm-hmm. I go through Aiden like Aiden doesn't have a real phone he's got um, he has an iPhone but mm-hmm. it's only connected to Wi-Fi yeah. yeah and he can be on Snapchat because I'm on like we His have the account, same account yeah. and I mean I trust him so he's not doing mm-hmm. anything crazy but I look at what these kids are putting out there mm-hmm. like his friends and I'm like wow this is a lot <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's not appropriate yeah and you know they're doing it yeah. because I mean I don't really know why they're doing it reactions I guess right they also, you're talking about middle schoolers right now who missed a huge key uh, aspect of, of development yeah. because of the pandemic. Like, yeah. I see it all the time. You know, we were worried about the eighth graders and the seniors and the college seniors. Right, the missing, milestone missing missers. Missing those milestones. Yeah, right. Those kids were rooted. They had, you know, talking about ground, they were, yep. they were where they, they were. They established. You were yeah. certainly going to have a, yeah. a, a group of high-risk population within that that we mm-hmm. should worry about. Right. But from day one, I said, I'm worried about the first graders, the kindergartners, and the preschoolers. Yep. I think that Thank those you. kids are going to struggle, and we're seeing such increasing numbers of diagnoses related to attention deficit disorder mm-hmm. or anxiety disorders or all of this, and and people are getting overwhelmed. And it's like, what do I do? What do I do? How, it is. How did we get here? Yeah. You know, you're watching middle schoolers who didn't have those play dates or those yes. moments on the playground, and yeah. now they're engaging with their peers, and it's like, mm. and it's weird. You know? It is. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little yeah. too aggressive, or it's a little this, or they're terrified. They're like, I don't know how to talk to. Somebody. I mean, they right. already didn't know. You know, I used to run a council and the kids would talk to me all the time. I'm like, well, what do you guys want to do? Can we do speed dating, but for like friends? And I was like, you guys are wow. me, right? Like, what do you want to do? And they're wow. like, yes. So we came up with like these crazy, funny questions and we mixed a whole group of high schoolers together. And they were like, that was the most fun that I've ever That's had. That's amazing. And they were saying like, I want this skill before I transit. They were uh, high school juniors and seniors. Wow. We need to learn how to do this so we can make friends before to we communicate. go to communicate. They need to you learn know, how to how communicate. How am I going to meet somebody on a camp? My parents are going to plot me and I'm going to be like, what am I going to talk to you wow. about? What am I going to do? Damn. You know? I didn't even think about that. You're blowing my mind right now. Like literally, and I'm sitting here and obviously you always go back to your own situations, yeah. your point of reference. And like I was almost called crazy by some um, professionals when mm-hmm. I said COVID is definitely playing a part in the development or non-development of my children. Like yes. you can't tell me that this pressure cooker of a non-situation is not affecting these children. Oh, of course. Like, and they just, 
th- dismissed it and or gave me some other answer. And I was like, like, I'm no expert, but mm-hmm. like common sense. Mm-hmm. So to validate that yeah. for so many parents that you see it and yeah. you feel as a parent isolated, yeah. you feel like you can't identify with other parents who you think their kids mm-hmm. are behaving or not in certain ways. And it's like, then now the parents are getting Mm-hmm. like socially isolated in their own respect and everybody's getting screwed up like to hear that is is a yeah again common sense approach we forget about parents so frequently you know it's just yep. kind of like you're in this role you should know how to do it you should come into it you should want to be in it right yeah. like there's a whole culture about that related to women and Big you know, time. talking to you know i work with a lot of young women who work in corporate and have you know careers and very big degrees and they're just like you know i'm not ready to have this kid yet i'm not ready to do it i want it but i'm supposed to be both at the same time and how do i navigate this and there's nothing out there like people are not having that conversation right right? it's very difficult how to you know the society is no way set up for us to be successful as working mothers and i have that conversation very frequently Mm. i have a very close friend to me who is such an incredible mentor and she's always just like you got it like got to think about it this way you got to think about it this way she had a very high you know power job and she just teach it like you know and that's what I say too is like surround yourself with people who are going to build you up and teach you the lessons that you also yeah you know need to know but like with you this, feed each other yeah yeah this COVID thing you know we forgot about parents during this time like that was a struggle for us it was crazy yeah. I can't tell you how many of my friends developed substance abuse problems yeah like had to go to rehab I mean and that otherwise fully functioning yeah but that was isolating it was yeah. stressful it was scary yeah. mm-hmm. then you kind of got your kids back in school yeah. but then they were freaking I mean and they all like, had their really? own issues yeah. to like compound your own yeah. issues your kids yeah. now have issues which sends every parent into yeah. a tizzy yeah it really does yeah we're talking about kids you know that that group I said you know missing their milestones but we missed parent we missed as yeah. parents oh, yeah. those milestones of parenting them yes. and becoming parents through that experience birthday right? party you know, out and about that. play dates the Watching simplest them things engage with yeah. each other and knowing Preschool. how to like interact yeah. and do this and yeah like, you know uh i only have my other kid to gouge against this one and say like you know and do comparison which that's never great yeah but you know my middle, i was that my, parent my yeah. middle child you know four years old all the time she'll just be, we just don't have to go to school today <laughs> because that's what it was. That's they know. What that's was. what they know. That's yeah. what it was. Like learning was so yeah. disrupted, yeah. and we we focused, you know, rightfully so in some senses, so harshly on academics. They can't fall behind. They can't fall behind. They can't fall behind. Yeah, but where's that SEL coming in? That yeah. social emotional learning was like right. a huge. It is probably the biggest. Yeah. Component. I think that's my baby's problem. He's yeah. seven, and he missed. I got him into preschool in April mm-hmm. before he went to kindergarten. Yeah. Um, and then kindergarten was masks and he is so cripplingly shy. Yeah. He's getting better. Like we're seeing it. He just got his IEP and then tested gifted and talented mm-hmm. in another end. Yeah. And he's finally coming out of his shell, but it's, mm-hmm. he's in the end of his second grade year and he's got like two friends. Yeah. And he yeah. told me, and I quote in kindergarten, Mom, I'm not like Aiden. I'm just not a friends guy. Mm. And I'm like, but you are a friends. And not that you need mm. to have, like, my mm-hmm. oldest is. So sh- he'll be the mayor. He will. The president. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of something. Mm-hmm. Um, the world. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. I'm having a hot flash. Sorry. Yeah. Excuse me, I see it. Yeah, I, I see it. Here it is. <laughs> Take the jacket off. Just Hi, Ethan. lean Ethan into learns it. learns all about uh, my ever-changing uh, body on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's like, you are a friends person. Yeah. You just never learned how to be friends with your peers. You mm-hmm. only know how to interact mm-hmm. with your older siblings' your brothers. peers because you yeah. were robbed of that experience. And so not to get back on my wagon here, but you're talking but about still, core beliefs. Yes. You know, he's got a core belief that he's not a friend person. And you're talking about really strong parenting skills that you're exhibiting and then being able to have somebody say like, okay, what you're doing is actually on the right path. Here's how I would tweak it. Here's how I would pull out of him what that core belief actually could be, right? Or right. what he wants it to be. For whatever reason he feels, I'm not that friend's person. He has an older brother. He sees that image. You know, it makes him uncomfortable. It's like, you know, and a lot of the core beliefs that I reshape with these kids, I have them write it and we go through it and revisit it and all my kids have little journals that we do and we you know talk about stuff i'm not a friends guy yet yet the power of yet mm. right you know that just gave me like legit i like chills. that you know you're not a friends guy yet you know and then a lot of it is like also but like that's okay yeah yeah it's okay bud like you yeah. don't have to be a friends guy right now yeah. like we'll figure Ooh. it out yeah you know and we'll i'm like tearing up girl <laughs> like you really yeah. i literally just used to say 
before my kids had language. Like, they're not talking. And I would always make sure to say, yes. Yeah. Yes. Out loud. And in my head, so that yeah. I knew, and they are like, we're here. I'm yeah. crying. Of yeah. <laughs> Thanks, You're crying. Nicole. I'm Sorry. Nicole, are you free after this? Because I think I need a safety plan. No, I'm yeah. okay. No, yeah. no, okay, okay. No, but no, I mean, but that's yeah. Yeah, that's sorry. All right, so we've got some some time left, but we're yeah. coming to the end. So. Yeah. Tell us what you want to talk about. What do I want to talk what about? What do you like, do? What do you want us to know? What, what is Nicole want... like? The 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 person outside of helping everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like what what uh gets you going? What gets me going? I yeah, like what do you love to do? <laughs> what do I love to do? Um, <sighs> tell us something. I love to go out to eat. Mm. You're a foodie. Oh, I'm a foodie. Like Oof. Me, uh, you, you are know. at the right table. My top love three meat. restaurants mm -hmm. for yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Go. Top, top three. In in oh, that no, area. I can't do it. You I have too many. Do it. There's too many. Listen, my. How do you decide then? Do you have I a safety I'm plan? I feel like. like <laughs> or do you make I'm somebody like else decide? Doing that. Like we've had a babysitter for this upcoming Saturday for about three weeks now, and mm -hmm. I keep going back. I'm like, what am I in the mood for? Like, oh my I made one reservation over here, and I was like, you know what? Not in the mood for that anymore. Gonna go over here. Where was that reservation? Oh, so I. There's this new um, Asian fusion place over in Marlboro called oh. Bad, Bad Hat. I've heard of this. Oh, yeah. I was like following them on Instagram for yes. a while. I was like, this looks incredible. Got to get out there. Like mm -hmm. the glasses, all of that different stuff. I'm like, woo, very excited for that. But, you know, at my core, and my husband makes this joke all the time because he's very, very Irish. Irish, Nolan, you know, but before I got married, my maiden name was Diamore, you know, mm -hmm. of love, you know, mm -hmm. my handle is of love, Nicole, like all of this different stuff. And my dad was very involved in the restaurant business. They owned a restaurant up in Manhattan. My oh, wow. was, you know, very involved in restaurants. So I, this that's is cool. Into me. Like I my, love my, that. You know, if my dad listens to this, he'd be like, oh my God, you know, oh. but it's just like, you know, that was our thing, like yes. going to restaurants. Like my dad worked on the stock exchange for a number of years before 9-11. And I would take a limo into the city with him. And we'd Love go that. and we'd work on the floor. And I remember, you know, they used to have the shoots, right? Mm -hmm. Where you would send down all the things that you would buy, buy before, like, you know, that all the so technology. That is so cool. And I remember one day, I took my dad's pad, let you write, like, buy or sell, and I put smiley faces and I put have a good day, and I sent them down the shoots, and my dad got his ass lit up. Oh! oh my God, they were like, this isn't a sell, this isn't this. He's like, all right, get her out of here, get her out of here. And, you know, if here that, I am, that like, that's even, adorable. Yeah, and they're know. all like, get that kid out of here now. They're like, you know, the Jesus. stock market's crashing. She's like, crashing. Like, get, wow. out of, get, out, get her out. And I'm like, smile, guys. So if I didn't, yeah, I guess I was meant to be a therapist yes. like, from, from that time. You guys are so fuck you. Yeah. I'm like, come on, guys. Are you okay? Are you grounded? Yeah. Plan. <laughs> Sit on um, the floor. They're like, uh, you know, and so, you know, I would go shopping with my dad. And like That's my nice. earliest mem memories that my parents have of me is like um, we would go to this restaurant in the city and I would eat um, baked clams mm. at the age of two. I was, was going like, to say, what? Little, yes, these little things. And my daughter does it too. We took yeah. her to, you know, another favorite restaurant of, my, of mine, Il Coliseo over in Middletown. Yes. Um, you know, my dad is very close with some of the guys over there too, so Rory went in and she, you know, ate the clam. My dad is like, this is, this is you know, genetic. Like, yeah. this is what we do. That must but, have been a proud yeah. pop moment. Oh, that was right? grandpa. No, no. No, no was very, no, very no, proud at loved that time. That. But, you That's know, amazing. So, you know, yes, going out to eat is like one of my favorite All right, things. we're here for that. You know, we love same. I love eat. a good That's my problem. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my problem. No, it's not a problem. No. It is in it's May before the summer. It is. It. It's it is. so good. Now wow. I want baked clams. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Yeah, don't be sorry. I'm, I, I may. You may. They're <laughs> yeah, delicious. Absolutely may. It's that time of year when I start to want like seafood because it gets warmer out yeah. and that's when I crave fish and, mm -hmm. and it's as you soon as the weather. You ever go to the, the boondocks down in, yes. um, that's a good yeah. like basic. Yep. We have to go. Just like lobster. Mm -hmm. lobster. So good. Love it. Two yeah. for It's two for one on Tuesdays, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can't get in like the line. Yeah, you right. Gotta wait. Like, right. Wow. And then they serve it to you in like a cardboard box. Yeah, but it's no, but it's great. It's, you don't care. It's so good. It's so good. It's I still it. ask my dad and my husband to crack the lobster. Oh yeah. oh yeah, that's my favorite. I don't part. like to smell like it. Yeah. No, I don't care. I'm like, yeah. and I'm, you know, like, I'm into it. It's like all over me. The crab legs. Yeah, be like, I won't even go my there. My hair. Like, I, I prefer a lobster salad. Sandwich. I also like a lobster salad. Dude. I like a good chilled uh, seafood tower. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. it's that time of year now. Like it is. yeah. It is. Well, we'll have to do that. Yes. Let's Absolutely. get some towers and and cocktails and, and mm -hmm. your choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All yeah. right. Perfect. I and celebrate you coming on. And again, mm -hmm. Nicole, tell everybody your handle so they can follow you on Instagram mm -hmm. for all of the very actionable, simple things to do in moments where journaling just may not 
they cut, not it. cut it. Right? Right? It's not it for you. <laughs> right. um, our handle on Instagram is Whole Peace Counseling. Our website is wholepeacecounseling.com. And that's uh, P E A, like peace. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whole Peace Counseling. Yeah. yeah. Whole Peace. What makes you whole? What that's makes what you we whole? talk about. And what what brings you, you peace? What brings you peace? <laughs> Anything new and exciting uh, in the next six months that we should know about? Oh, in the next six months. I, I know you know. were working on, like, growing. She's got a busy schedule. Yeah. I do have a busy schedule. I'm like, the first thing that comes into my head is, like, oh, what are my kids' sports schedules? Um, <laughs> oh I don't really know. It's always I, the I, mom first, right? You know, I just want to be yeah. present. I want to help people. I think that that's always my, you know, primary goal. You know, I, I'm, you know, I have to give a shout-out to one of my, you know, really close friends in the area. He started a great nonprofit. We met through lost together his name is teddy storless he's actually being honored tonight at the shore house um, event uh, for all the work that he's doing you know he really focuses on men's mental health Uh, he's a young young kid trying to you know encourage the sports teams to you know if we're going to have this high level of performance how to do that so him and i have partnered together for quite some time and we bring our kind of talk on the road and we talk to parents and we talk to school about you know um that's huge being the clinical person and him being like here's my lived experience here's what it looked like and for men they never seek the mental help we yeah. maybe that's another podcast maybe oh, bring Teddy him on that's yeah I'm part two up, but, yeah you know, part two he's great yeah oh so, i love that yeah. all right so yeah. then to be continued to be yes. to be continued all right i was gonna say d i'm like that's no, not no, no. no. to be continued <laughs> <laughs> dot 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 yeah well thank you Good. so much for coming thank on for and thank you everyone for listening great. make sure to give nicole a follow at whole peace counseling and Happy almost Mother's Day. Yeah, happy Happy Mother's Mother's Day. Day. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys.